Hello and welcome to the HumeScope podcast from and Lowell. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, HumeScope is a recruitment training business um, co-founded by myself, Ed Khan, and Laura Hopes. And each week we're going to be giving you 10-minute snippets into our world of recruitment, tips and tricks to help you on your journey as an agency recruiter, and hopefully some laughs along the way too. Hope you guys enjoy. So this week we are talking about... Objection handling. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I love this topic because I wish that I had been taught a proper process around this when I started in recruitment. Because I feel like we, we know what the common objections are when we make a sales call, right? It's Like we use another agency, we've had a provider in place for a long time, we have a PSA, we don't typically work with agencies, like we know what we're going to get. But I don't think a lot of recruiters are taught kind of like a linear process, at least of how Mm. to try and tackle the objection. And I think what we're told is in sales training, like every objection can be handled. And that's just bullshit. Yeah. And you know what it is? It is that structure. God, it sounds boring, doesn't it? But it is a process and a structure to handling an objection. You, you hate it. I mean, it's like, this is a structure. You're like, I'm out. There's no <laughs> art to this. But there is an art to it through the, the structure, I oh, think. Totally. I think one of the biggest challenges with it is that, yes, the structure is great and you absolutely need it. But the first thing that you absolutely need to do in that type of conversation is be there to genuinely listen, mm-hmm. not to respond. Because I think that's what typically people go, oh, they've said they won't use agencies. And in your head, you just thought, what's the response? And it shouldn't actually be that. It should be what our roles are, which is consultative, actually listen to understand, yeah, respond to that, not just handle an objection like an old school salesperson of just hammering people. Yeah. I think it's like the acknowledgement, because I think what we have to remember is that there are a lot of objections that are valid. Hmm. You know, I feel like I say this all the time in our training, but like if someone someone did a recruitment call to Hope's Consult, like my other business, my objections would be valid. Like it's been in business for four and a half years and I'm never going to hire anyone in that business. So like I'm not saying it to kind of get a recruiter off the phone or trick anyone. It's just that I don't need them. And so I think when we go into like objection handling mode, we need to keep an awareness that what we're trying to do there is not not fix the objection, but trying to figure out whether the objection is valid and whether there are parts of the objection that actually don't really stack up. Because what you're going to be given is like a blanket objection, right? Like haven't used your recruiter in 10 years or we... We only use one agency, but what that doesn't allow for are the chinks in the armor of that. Like, but what happens if? So I think it's acknowledging that you're not going to fix or solve every objection. And just to pull back a little bit, acknowledge the objection first, validate what the person's saying, and then really listen to what they actually have to say and start to fact find more about that objection. Mm, 100%. I always, um, my old boss, Joni, used to always say, just continuously in your head, ask why. Whenever someone says no to you, ask them why. But you don't obviously have to go, why? <laughs> why? But in your head, you're just like, why? That's your purpose in those calls. Find out more. Dig a little bit deeper. Don't just take that from a surface level rejection um, or try and solve someone's issues when they're rejecting or saying, it's all sort of cantering you. Yeah. It's, it's actually dig point. deeper because, as you said, unless you dig deeper, you won't know what the chinks in the armour are. And workshopping with a prospect, the what ifs, because once you've understood the why and asked deeper questions and actually had a consultative conversation, then that opens the room up for, okay, cool, what happens if? And getting the client or prospect in the mode of workshopping that in their head because quite often what they 
will come back to you with, I, we will never use an agency. And in their head, they might completely believe it because they've not worked up all the different scenarios that may come up in the next year. And it's their jobs to bring that to them and get them to workshop it and go, cool, totally hear you. You don't use agencies. Can I ask what would happen if your whole marketing team up and left tomorrow? It's like all of a sudden, oh, okay, if the whole team left, we'd probably consider an agency because our business is built on e-commerce and without the marketing team, we can't function. Okay, awesome. That's a chink in the armor. Then you start sort of working towards that. Well, then you build your value prop around mm. that, don't you? Yeah. Rather than like, I'm here to fix your problems right now. It's like, mm. well, we don't have any problems right now. Okay, cool. Well, these are the areas that we have weaknesses in mm. that a recruiter might be able to add value in in the future. And I think, you know, the episode where we speak about market mapping versus lead generation, this is part of your market mapping because this is a mm. part of establishing whether or not companies are going to be potentials for you over the next 12 months. It's part of your qualification process. And it's like if someone's answers are really robust and they just come back to all of your what happens if mm. and they have an answer to it, well, they shouldn't be part of your ongoing pipeline because they genuinely don't need you. But if there is that moment where they're like, haven't thought about that, mm. or yeah, I would be lost without my current recruiter, or yeah, like to be honest, time is starting to become an issue when we're recruiting, especially in this candidate short market. Like there might be the odd mm. position that we would have to be to put through an agency. So I think it is that process. And I think so many of us that like, we hear an objection and it's confronting, right? And all you want to do, your fight or flight activates, and it's your flight. Typically, you just you want to you want to leave the conversation. And I think it's having the confidence to have a process to go. Okay, well, I'm just going to take this a little bit further. And yeah. so I think what we always say: validate the objection to start with. Like really listen to it and validate it. So if someone says to you, "We work with another recruiter." The first thing I would always say is like, that's great to hear that you've got a good relationship in place, like you're very lucky to have that because that's not a threat to me. And my job is not to like immediately push back on that. And that should lower their stress levels mm -hmm. so that I can then start to fact find around it. Like, how long have you worked with them? What type of roles do they feel for, like feel for you? Like, like you said, like starting to build that bigger picture as to like what the set scene is. And once we've got that rapport going and, we feel like they're opening up a little bit that's when we can start throwing in the what would happen if because yeah. then that's when they have to start problem solving like yeah. oh well I haven't thought about that or well we actually have backup plans for all of that thanks so the other thing from then on once you've done that facts fine mission and I reckon we should do a podcast episode next week on this um but it is intelligent selling. I think a lot of business developers, not just in recruitment across every industry, have in their head what is their value prop. They go, my value to clients is always going to be my experience, the fact that I can find great marketers, blah, 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 we do videos, et cetera, et cetera. That's my value and I'm always going to sell that. And it's like, no, every single person that you speak to will value something differently. And it's your job before you start selling who you are and your value, you need to understand what the prospect values. And in that fact finding, start of that pool, understanding what their challenges are, what they actually value, because if you get them talking, you will pick up those things um, on the call and then basing your essentially your pitch to that not what you think is amazing about you it's what does what has a prospect told you as a potential challenge and can you fix that and sell that don't sell everything that you think is amazing about you or your agency because people don't care if it's okay. not relevant to them and they don't value it they will gloss over no it's tailoring isn't it we should do an episode on that I love the way you're like we'll do that episode next week as if we run these in a linear <laughs> Like, we're literally going to stop recording this and start the next one then we'll do the next one because now we have an idea for it no I realized as well like I didn't I like if some reason just didn't even think about the fact that we were recording it all I've been able to look at is like my bag's down there Louis's toys are there my bikini's out in the garden fresh as ever <laughs> we don't even have mics on uh, 
We don't even have microphones. Hopefully, no. that is good. Add value, you'll listen, and if it doesn't, you you'll turn us off. Like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, has it been ten minutes? I reckon that's yeah. a, put a process to it and sell what people pay. Active listening, listen, actually listen to the objection and validate it for the prospect to lower stress levels. Fact find around it, find out more information about it, gather as much information or intel as you can as they will allow you. Start introducing questions if you are building good report around what happens if and start to see if you can find the chink in the armor. And when you can or if you can find the chink in the armor, then that's what you need to start selling to. That's what you need to start talking to them about. Yes, love it. I feel like this has been a mini training session. I know, yeah, same. A little lulls. There's not been any lulls in this one, so apologies. For funny that. This it. week it's just been rolls. <laughs> it's just really been rolls, yeah. And next week maybe we'll dress up. <laughs> See you next week. Bye.